In this video, I will show you how to extract the data for the duration of time that we're interested in from the exported CSV files. We will be looking at three CSV files, the wheel velocity as a function of time, the acceleration as a function of time, and also the uh, gyroscope data where you get uh, omega, which is the rotational velocity as a function of time. So first I've opened up the, the wheel velocity as a function of time. Notice there are numerous columns here. We're interested in column D, which is uh, the time. And we're interested in column H, which is calibrated 1, which is the wheel velocity in the y direction. 0 corresponds to the x direction, and 2 corresponds to the z direction. Neither of those are of interest to us. We're only interested in the velocity in the y direction. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just select those two columns, copy those two columns, start a new sheet, and then paste them there. So now whatever manipulation I'm going to do is with just these two columns. So the second thing I want to do is to scroll down on the time axis and select only uh, a portion of time from 3.8 seconds to about 4.8 seconds. So I'm going to just scrolling down here till I get to about 3.8 seconds. So I want this data until about 4.8 seconds. I've scrolled down too much here, so let me just go back up a little bit. So there's 4.8 seconds. So that's all the data I'm interested in, right? So I'm going to copy that data. I'm going to now start a new um, Excel spreadsheet. And in this new Excel spreadsheet, I'm going to then paste uh, this data. And I have to label this. So this is time. And this is VY, which is the velocity in the Y direction for the wheel. We will come back to this spreadsheet a little bit later. We're going to uh, put in uh, the uh, data from the gyroscope and also data from the acceleration. So we're going to do that momentarily. So for now, I have selected this data from the wheel velocity. Notice, and let me go back to that uh, new spreadsheet. Notice that if you look at the time column, you'll notice that the decimal position here is only two digits. So the sampling rate is such that it only samples once every hundredth of a second or so. Right, uh, but that but you'll see when we look at the data for the gyroscope as well as the um, accelerometer, the data is more accurate than that. So we're going to have to do a little bit more manipulation so that we only uh, get data corresponding to these time values. All right. So now presently, let me move on to the next spreadsheet. I would like to talk about the acceleration spreadsheet now. So similar to what you saw for the wheel velocity, here is the data for the acceleration uh, of the device obtained from the accelerometer. Uh, so this is the exported CSV file. So here you have numerous columns again, the index, the frame, the sample, and then the time. And we're interested in the calibrated 0 and calibrated 1, which corresponds to the uh, component of the acceleration in the x direction that's in column F, and component of the acceleration in the Y direction, which is um, column H. So I'm interested in a few things here. I would like, I'm going to grab the sample as well. So I want that column. I want the time column. I want calibrated zero, the acceleration in the X direction. And I also need calibrated one, which is acceleration in the y direction. So I'm going to start a new sheet here, and I'm just going to paste those columns. Oops, sorry, I pasted the wrong stuff. So let me go back and copy that, and then paste that data. So now that I have that data, I'm the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select column B, the stuff in column B. I'm going to select all of that data, and I'm going to make this accuracy of the time uh, to only two decimal places. Okay, so it just takes a little bit of time for the computer to work and uh, you will see in a moment that it would have actually uh, truncated the decimal accuracy here. 
So as you can see here, it's starting to do that. And uh, by the time I scroll back, you'll see that it has actually indeed truncated the accuracy for the time to just two decimal places. But there are, but you'll see that there are there are multiple entries here, right? So for example, uh, 0 0.11 and 0 0.11, right? There's two entries here. 0 0.12 also has two entries. 0 0.13 has two entries. So that means it has sampled twice from the time interval 0 0.13 to 0 0.14. And so the first time it samples is called sample 1, oh, sorry, sample 0. Second time it samples is called sample 1. So that tells you that uh, you've got a bit more data than you actually need. All right, so we don't need all of this data. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just select the time from about 3.8 seconds to about 4.8 seconds. Right, That's the only time that I'm interested in. So let me scroll down to 3.8 seconds. I'm still scrolling. So here is 3.8 seconds somewhere over here. So what I want is I don't want any of the data preceding that. So I'm going to select all these columns. And I am going to delete them. Next, I'm going to scroll down to 4.8 seconds. Over here and I, I'm going to keep both of those but from 4.81 I'm going to delete all of these columns. So now what I've got is data which is only from 3.8 seconds to 4.8 seconds but there is there are some duplicates right every every one of those has two entries right okay so one thing we can do is we have to select um, one sample. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select sample number one uh, for all of them. So to, the way to do that is to click at the top and then uh, uh, make sure that you're in the home section um, on the top pane. Uh, come over here and you'll see that you have sort and filter. So click on that. And you want to add a filter here. So then when you click that button, you'll see that there are these drop downs that appear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this drop down and I'm going to say I want to uh, select certain things only, right? Filter the data based on certain things only. So I just want the data that has one. Okay, so and it's the as soon as I click that, the filter is automatically applied. So you'll see here that only the sample number one. Is selected all the way through so that means I get one selection from 3.8 seconds another from 3.8 one another from 3.82 etc so these and there's no duplicitous uh, sorry uh, not duplicitous pardon me but duplicate uh, uh, data entries yeah so there's only um, uh, data entries one data entry per uh, instant in time right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy, I'm interested in this data, right? So I select all of that and then I copy it. And now I head over to that new file. I paste it there and this is AX and this is a Y. All right, now that I've got that, I'm going to now go over to the file for the gyroscope data. So similarly, you'll see when you look at the time axis that there's a lot of accuracy here, but we don't need that. So again, uh, I only want um, the, uh, the data between 3.8 and 4.8 seconds. So I'm going to just excise parts of the data. So first I'm going to select the columns that I'm interested in, so sample, time, and this time I'm interested only in omega z. So that's the last column. Right? So I just want those three. I'm going to copy those three. I'm just going to copy those three columns. And I'm going to now create a new sheet. And I'm going to paste those three columns here. And now 
I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is select the time column and make sure that the decimal accuracy is only two digits right so that's all I'm interested in so I'm going to do that it takes a little while for the computer to actually round it to two decimal places so it's done that now you'll see that I've got um, you know again duplicate entries so 0 0.03 appears twice 0 0.04 appears twice it's sampled twice in that time interval so once at this point and another at this point they have certain sample labels so again I'm going to do the same I'm going to click on the top one and then apply a filter and the filter I'm going to apply is I just want one so it automatically applies it so now there are no duplicate entries so now that I've done that I just want to select the time uh, from 3.8 seconds to 4.8 seconds. So I can get rid of all the other data, right? So let me scroll down to 3.8 seconds. So there's 3.8 seconds. So I'm going to select all of that data. I'm going to delete that, right? So then I must scroll down to 4.8 seconds and then delete all the other data. That's over here. So I'm going to delete all of this. Okay, so now I've only got data from 3.8 to 4.8 seconds, and I'm interested in only this data. So I copy that, and now I move over to the new file that I've created, copy, paste all that copied data, and this is Omega Z. You'll notice that uh, Omega Z is negative, uh, but we're not interested in the direction in which uh, the object rotates. One direction is considered negative, the other is considered positive. We are only interested in the magnitude of this. So you can create another column called the absolute value of omega z. And you can then simply take the absolute value of all of these. And uh, if I double click here, it just takes the absolute value of all of these entries in that column. And uh, it's, uh, it has, you can see, done that. Now, if you look at the bottom here, you'll notice that there are discrepancies, right? Um, some entries are available, others are not, right? So that's a problem. So that means uh, even though we selected from 3.8 seconds all the way to 4.8 seconds, uh, at the end of that interval, there is some discrepancy. So I'm just going to chop off that portion here like so okay so all I'm interested in is from 3.8 seconds to about 4.72 seconds it seems and that's the only data that I will work with and in the next video I will show you what we will do in order to analyze the data that we have now extracted from the CSV files